Take a farmer. A photographer. And a teenage girl. Buy a bus. Add a dog. And let the adventure begin. Hello and welcome again to O'Neill's On The Run, Life in a Bus. Uh, just catching up, you're tuned into episode two and last ep we discussed buying a bus and a little bit about life pre-bus. Um, and uh, this week we're going to go a little bit more on to what was in the bus and the design process and uh, just see where the chat leads us. But firstly, I've got to answer a few questions from podcast listener Lynn Lee. Now, if anyone knows how to answer a question on the podcast on the Spotify, please let me know because I cannot for the life of me figure out how you respond to a question. But the questions here are um, from Lynn Lee is, do we have a tow vehicle? We do. We did not originally, but we do now. And we, we tow um, a Nissan Navara. We flat tow it with a Predator tow system uh, is the... The vehicle at the moment, uh, we will do a full F on that because it was, was quite an adventure to come to that conclusion. Yeah, um, a lot of research, a lot of Googling until we found exactly what we wanted and get the right vehicle and everything, but yeah, we'll do an episode on it. And um, the second question from Lindley was, what is our litres per 100? We are 23, not towing, and about 26 towing, a little bit more if we get into the hills or a little bit more of a drive, depending on how I drive it, they're sitting on about 80 to 90. And um, so just remember, pop us some questions. We love to answer everybody's questions as we um, travel through this because I know um, lots of people have lots of different things to ask and every time we pull up into a caravan park, we get hit with a million different questions from people. So jump on any of the socials or the podcast comment section, leave us some, some questions and we'll um, try to answer those for you as we go along. Uh, next, I guess we better introduce the fourth and final person to the bus. So you've got me, Candy, and Tom and Ali, and the one that does the best on social media is Mumbles, or Mim as she is known for short, and she's our stumpy-tailed blue heeler cattle dog. Um, Tom owned her dad, he was a working dog, and um, my sister owned her mum, and she came to live with us as a six-week-old puppy, and that was about, oh, she's just about to turn three. So she's pretty much known bus and bus life her whole life. And as we um, go through the cast podcast, we're going to sort of have a bit of a discussion about what it's like to travel with a dog and, and her sort of dog, not a caboodle or an oodle or a poodle or something else, but a, sort of a, a big dog and a protective kind of dog. So we'll talk about the pros and cons uh, and what we find works and doesn't work with, with the dog. And that's mumbles you can jump on the social and see her she's um she's the number one hit every week every time we post a mumbles photo everyone loves those ones so um i'm sure you'll see her um around and her and candace i reckon spent the most time in the bus when you're doing it up all the time she's in the bus yeah she's yeah. very she's very bonded to the bus through renovation process um mumbles just used to sleep in here while i was ripping everything out and painting and so it's definitely her bus probably more than anything else it's a a little spot um so back to what we're actually trying to cover in the podcast and uh, we've bought the bus we've brought it home we've had a bit of a look around i went and bought a new doona and thinking yep that's going to make it pretty and we're going <laughs> to kind of move on in and then we just decided the layout wasn't right and there was a few little things that we needed to change so um chat about that yeah well the bunk beds had to come out first of all because unless you were five you weren't fitting in them yeah so there was a set of triple bunks in the no, they were double, doubles. double bunks yeah. on the side wall opposite the bathroom about midway about midway down um the bus uh, they were quite closed in and quite small so um i think tom went to work one day and he came home and i was in the bus with a wrecking bar uh demolishing yeah and you when you pull the bus apart anything the previous owner did was pretty dodgy and anything the folk that did it initially did was super glued and oh everything was done so well it was just a mission to get anything apart that he did yeah yeah everything was um 
studded D sieve and six screws instead of one. Everything was very solidly in. So as we started ripping things out, we realized we just couldn't really patch up little bits and it become a bigger job than we thought. And we also realized there wasn't a lot of insulation in the walls once we dinged a few holes in the, um, had that old 70s wood paneling sort of lining all over the bus, uh, which we ripped out and replaced with color bond high gloss flat sheet, um, which I come from the steel industry, so that worked really well for me. Uh, but yeah, um, so, so we started with knocking out bunks. Bunks. Uh, we decided to leave the bathroom. We didn't touch the bathroom, I don't think. And the kitchen was still in when we went on our first trip. And did we, I can't remember if we had the back bed out or not. I we think. had the bed out. I think we'd ripped it out um, before we went on our first trip. And our next ep, we're going to talk about our first run. Uh, we went out west to western New South Wales. So we're going to talk about that next episode. But, yeah, I, I'm sure we'd pulled the bed out because we were starting to have a disagreements about where the bed That's right. was going to go. Was gonna go. Yeah. And I guess the other thing was uh, the back, the very back, passenger side window in the bus which is in the main bedroom area was smashed and we sort of looked at getting that replaced at a horrendous cost yeah we couldn't get because it had to be all safety glass and the weird angles but yeah, in the end i think we just came to the conclusion that we were going to get rid of it and board it up which i think is probably a mistake yeah, looking I, back now, without the, with the wind flow in the back, like trying not to use the air conditioner. I think yeah. Once we took the window out, it was definitely the cheapest and easiest way to fix it at the time. But it has cost us airflow and light in the back bedroom area. And I quite like open air. I hate being closed in. I like how the windows open and lots of natural light coming in. So I think we did make a mistake taking that window out. Yeah, I've since seen a couple of buses now where the actual the big window was smashed, not the slide windows, and I've seen where they've just taken out the big window and um, left the two windows at the top, which I think is what we probably should have done. Probably should would have been the better idea. And um, once we sheeted that wall back in where the window used to be, the initial idea was to make that the bed head for a queen-size bed. Um, and we sort of argued about the bed orientation quite a bit getting in from one side climbing over each other all that sort of practical stuff and at the same time we'd also decided that we weren't going to take the back window out uh, nearly every bus renovation you see has the big back window the back windscreen taken out and we were both pretty adamant i think that we were going to keep that in because if we were going to live in amazing locations we wanted to wake up watching the sunrise and the sunset yeah. In, in those amazing locations and i don't regret that for a minute that's one of my favorite things no not at all i think when the the biggest thing we did was bought a second hand bed frame put it together in the back of the bus and just kept moving it around until we found the right spot yeah yeah that would definitely settle the argument because as soon as we sort of got it in there and we looked at the space and the height of the bed because uh, with the rear mount engine there's the the steps to access and yeah the, the original old seats would have gone there yeah and to to be able to put the bed there but still access the engine um the the cover holes the manholes in the floor to get into the engine if something horrible yeah. goes and we had wrong. to lift the hole well we bought it was a um a bed from omf omf mattresses yeah and then we had to actually lift the bed up probably about 30 centimetres, I think. Yeah, we made like a little pedestal to sit a pre-made yeah. queen bed, a gas lift bed on. Yeah, um, big shout out to Jack Checkley for making the bottom frame for us. I hope you're listening to that, Jack, Jack when we uh, started out and we were a bit green and we didn't know what we were going to do. And we, uh, But since then, we sort of got a bit, bit slightly better at cabinetry and things. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then underneath, there's a lot of storage underneath found. Once we lift that 30 centimetres plus the gas lift bed, there's so much storage underneath. Like my cricket keys under there nearly all the time. There's golf clubs. Swag. There's a swag. Like there's uh, so much photo, storage space My photo there. market stuff. Um, yeah, so much room. All of our spare clothes are under there. But definitely made a lot of sense to turn that bed um, so at this stage, the bed is towards, it's in the rear section of the bus, but the bed head is towards the front of the bus and our feet are at the back window. Yeah. So when we're lying in bed, we wake up and go to sleep looking at that beautiful big window. 
Um, it's pushed over on one wall, which does mean I have to climb over Tom in the night if I need to get out in and out. But um, I guess at well late thirties, early forties, we're still capable of doing that. And um, so at this stage, that sort of works for us. That that part of the layout. Um, yeah, and then the the back gave you the ability to put. Um, like to redo the rear seat, don't know where the dog sleeps now. <laughs> yeah, across the back um, of the, the very back parcel tray, we have a, a shelf parcel tray which we sit a couple of baskets and sort of day to day things on. Tom puts his caps there, my camera goes there, phone charges and things. And um, then I made a little bench seat across the back at the foot of the bed, um, which used to be my favourite reading nook, but now it's where the dog sleeps and it's Mim's spot, Mumble's spot. Uh, it's where she sleeps every night. So it's covered in dog hair, which isn't very pleasant. That's one of the, the big downfalls of dog in a bus. It is dog hair everywhere in a bus. Yeah. And then what else have we done back there? We hadn't done the TV or anything yet. I no, think we've we... just done the back tray and then I'd wired a lot of USB ports in yeah, around. I think very, we sort of made sure we put USB ports everywhere and charges everywhere. Um, read. I oh, know we hadn't got to reading lights and things yet. I don't think, no. but we do have a reading light above uh, the queen bed, the main bed. Um, and so what we did, we started with the rip out in the back, and we slowly worked our way forwards. But even at that point, I don't think we thought it was going to be as big of a remodel as we've ended up doing. No, not at all. I don't think. And then I think that's when you started at the back trying to get that roof glue off because there used to be carpets around. Yeah. So. So the, the roof of the bus was lined with a uh, dark navy like marine carpet and it was full of bull dust and um, mice droppings, as we talked about last episode. Mice had been into the carpet, but it was glued to the roof with something um, that should be like military grade, super adhesive. It, nothing in the glue remover section, no paint strippers, heat guns, nothing would get rid of this glue off the roof of the bus. So I sanded with a rust stripping brush above my head, the full uh, 40 feet, both sides of the bus, uh, and it became mission roof glue. And it was the absolute worst part of bus renovations. I'd come home and do half an hour every evening until I couldn't lift my hands above my head. Um, I got great shoulders out of it. I guess that's like going to the gym. <laughs> it was pretty good exercise, but it was horribly toxic stuff. So full, full mask on and just get into this roof glue. Um, it was a huge job, absolute huge job each week. Um, and we started that, um, and then we started, just started painting and, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah and tidying up the back end of the bus, really. If anyone wanted to know the windows to pull out how hard it was, it was just um, all the rivets around, just drilled the rivets out, pulled out the um, seal around it, pretty much. And then the window came out fairly easy, just worked it back and forth. And there's a little bit of glue and the window came out fairly easy. I don't think it wasn't hard at all. No, it, um, yeah, window came out much easier than I think we expected it to come out. Yeah, uh, and then we just welded, I welded two beams and a cross beam in it. And that's what we riveted the sheet and to. And then, yeah, just resheeted it. And it's, we put, it a, it's aluminium, aluminium on, the on the outside. Yeah. I was going to say stainless, but it wasn't. It was yeah, aluminium. aluminium. Yep. And then um, sticker flexed on. Yeah, and then stick a flexed all around. We did have a leak a couple of times, and then we just stick a flexed it. Yeah, so more. um, I think the whole bus is pretty much held together with pop rivets and stick a flex. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's sort of where we got to, and and at that point we we're maybe we we're maybe six to eight weeks in by that stage because we were kind of just eating dinner in it and hanging out and trying to get a feel for what it was going to be like in the space, and. Then we were going to go to the Whit Sundays for Tom's mum's birthday. So we booked a holiday to the Whit Sundays and we thought, right, we'll drive the bus up there. It's all hardly fit out, but we'll drive the bus up there. And then, of course, with COVID and Queensland lockdown. Yeah, strapped in a bed for Al. I think we just had a bed on a frame. Yeah. <laughs> we, just ratchet strapped we in did, the We did. We just put a little steel frame single bed and we just literally ratchet strapped that to the floor for Ali to sleep in. So it was all pretty how you're going. And... Um, couldn't go to Queensland because of the border lockdowns and we just headed west with no particular itinerary. We just thought we'd go for a Western New South Wales run uh, two weeks and, and see how things went. 
That's right. We put a motorbike on the trailer. Oh, yeah, yeah. We took yeah. a motorbike and, and then a box trailer. I, I recently bought a push bike that I took as well. Yeah. Just trying to work yeah. out what we'd need when we actually a went. mountain bike. So it was like our very first little taste of bus lifing, and we're going to go over that uh, next step. We're going to jump into that and um, talk about our first run and where we went and saw, and, and – um, We'll do that next ep, but I think for now, Tom has his joke of the week for us. Joke of the week. We'll try again, eh? Yeah, yeah not, not, we, we got some bad <laughs> comments from being a bit of a dad joke last week, so he's, he's up his ante a little bit. And I, um, oh, up, I, I wouldn't say that. Maybe apologies in advance. I'm sure he'll offend somebody this week, so uh, let's have it. Well, what's the difference between Iron Man and Iron Woman? What's the difference? One's a superhero and one's a command. Yeah. <laughs> he is getting dirty looks across the counter here in the bus. Uh, from both. <laughs> from both. There's, there's a dirty look coming from the teenage girls. <laughs> um, and I um, I thought from time to time we, we, we learn some pretty cool things living in a bus. And the bus life fun fact for this week is that you can move a toxic fart with a blower vac. Now, interesting story tom uh, walked into the bus and passed ali's sloth hole and and let rip and continued on to the back of the bus to watch tv i was sitting midship trying to ignore the whole the whole fiasco and i'm doing ali's doing really good she hasn't blown up she hasn't told him off but what she did do is walk to the front of the bus and grab the blower back and uh just blew it straight on back past me thanks for that ali second whiff and straight into the back of the bus with Tom, where he started coughing and gagging on his own smell. So there you go, bus life fun fact number one. You can move a toxic fart with a Makita blower back. And um, I think that brings me to my uh, little motivational for the week. And from me this week, it is. Just remember, five years ago, you dreamed about where you are now. And um, that's definitely the definitely true of us today we um well actually five years ago i don't even think we could have dreamt we'd be anywhere like this now no i just thought it would have been the same routine still kicking the nine to five still doing the grind but... <laughs> i wish it was a nine to five <laughs> but here we are living the dream so catch up with us next week when we talk about our first travel trip in the bus out west we'll talk about all our favorite things we saw and done as well as getting to know the bus and a few things that went wrong along the way and a few things that went right along the way uh enjoy your week and we'll catch up with you again shortly make sure you follow us on all the social media channels at o'neill's on the run and tune in regularly to come along with us on this crazy adventure